for me, I think if I can change people's life with my art form, that's all I need to do. And uh, honestly, I think everything that I've done in life, uh, I've really followed that principle. Welcome to the Tennessee Performing Arts Center's Inside Out podcast. Today, we're warming up with opera soprano Helen Huang. Special thank you to the Nashville Opera and artistic director John Hooms for arranging this interview on Zoom. My name is Helen Jibing Huang, and I am originally from Beijing, China. Um, I was born there, um, but I grew up in Richmond, Virginia since uh, the age of 12, and I am an opera singer. Okay, so I just find this so fascinating. How old were you when you became interested in singing opera, and when did you first hear your first opera? I heard my first opera at a pretty young age. Um, my dad has always has always brought me to different classical music concerts, uh, operas, plays, just everything since a very young age. So I was exposed to everything. Um, in terms of opera, I would say I didn't really become interested in singing it um, until I was in high school and I started taking voice lessons. Um, but I had been taking, um, what I, let me start that sentence over. <laughs> um, I had been doing choir and playing the piano um, since I was six. So music has always been in my life. Oh, that's fantastic. So did was it your vocal teacher that said, you have the ability for this or was it was it your idea what made you what made you decide to focus on opera i when i was in high school um the core program in that particular school um was relatively small and my mother was the one that was like you know why don't you start taking voice lessons i think it'll be something fun for you to do on the side and in addition to all the other stuff that you were doing <laughs> in school um, and then my teacher was kind of like, well, I think, I think you have a really great voice for opera. So let's, let's try it out. And she's an opera singer herself. So mm -hmm, mm -hmm. that's fantastic. So talk to us about your training. Then you started, uh, singing. When did you start voice lessons? When you were 12, you said? I started voice lessons when I was about 16, 17, which is pretty normal for opera singers. Usually instrumentalists start much younger. Mm -hmm. When did you start piano? Um, I started piano when I was eight. And do you feel like having learned the piano gave you a sort of a leg up on being able to sing? Um, I think it's helped me tremendously as a musician. I can learn music very quickly because um, Mm -hmm. the piano training just made me a better musician. Um, I would say I'm not really a pianist anymore. I'm pretty bad at playing the <laughs> piano. <laughs> um, being a musician is like being an athlete. If you don't practice every single day, you lose the muscle, you lose the skill. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So talk to us about your vocal training then. You mean in terms of schooling? Yeah, yeah. I went to the Eastman School of Music for my undergrad. Um, at the time, um, I was also very interested in the math and sciences. Mm -hmm. um, so I actually did a dual degree um, with the University of Rochester as well. I was an econ major, so I was doing two things at the same time. <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> it was really fun, actually. It gave me a whole different perspective on life, and I got to meet a lot of really wonderful people from all walks of life. It was amazing. And then whenever I could that summer, I just went to see the opera and I realized I really just wanted to be on stage and performing. And so you got a dual degree. Did you go on after? Yeah, what, what, what did you continue? I did, I did a lot of schooling. <laughs> I went to um, Bard College Conservatory after that. Um, that was Don Upshaw's program at the time. Um, and after that, uh, the program was very much so focused on um, art song and new music. Um, so after that, I thought I wanted to do something that's a little more opera focused. So I went to New England Conservatory 
um, for a graduate diploma. Now, I, I've heard, is it true that opera singers, your voice doesn't, well, I guess singers in general, your voice doesn't really mature until you're a little bit older. What is that age? And have you, did you notice, have you noticed a big difference in your own voice from when you first started to now? Absolutely. I would say late twenties is when people are starting to fall into their adult voice. Um, I just turned 30 this year, so <laughs> <laughs> I feel like just the past few years, I, I really found my voice. Excellent. And what about it? Is, is it sort of a tone that's different or just your control over it that's different? Um, both, um, but also it's, it's also something that's slightly indescribable. You just, you feel very at home. I don't know if that makes sense at all. Yeah. No, it does. Yeah. 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 And when you're singing, you're just, you're like, this is right. It's clicking. <laughs> and so did you're an, a soprano singer. Mm -hmm. did, did you choose to sing soprano or did, or is that, or did soprano choose you? Uh, I think for me, there never was really a question that I, I am a soprano. Um, especially when I was younger, I had really easy higher extensions. Mm -hmm. um, much mm -hmm. easier than <laughs> my adult, <laughs> adult voice at the moment. Um, but yeah, there just never was really a question that I'm a soprano. That was, fortunately, that was an easy one for me. <laughs> That's awesome. What do you do to warm up for a performance? Um, so every performer, it's slightly different. Um, I really like to eat a lot of food on the day of a performance, but not super greasy and salty because that makes me sleepy. I don't want to do that. <laughs> All is good because I think um, me being on the smaller side, I like to feel like I have a lot of things I can lean on when I'm singing. Um, in the morning, I like to do some like light stretches to get my body going. Um, I also really love doing yoga on the day of a performance. It just gets my voice warmed up, my body warmed up. Um, also, yoga also promotes like healthy breathing, which is really important for singing as well. Um, and then I would say a couple hours before the performances, um, I'll start warming up my middle voice first without going to the extremities. Um, and then wait a little bit, uh, do a little more stretching, and then start stretching both my chest voice and my top high notes. All right. I would love to hear an example of those things. Can yeah. you? Do you what know? would you like to hear? Let's I can move you to my piano. <laughs> Let's start with your what you said. Your your middle. You're warming your middle voice up first. What does that sound like? So very simple scale. Um, we can just do. Let's do a three note arpeggio. <laughs> I usually start on lip trill first. Then you go up. And then I would do it on an E vowel. Okay. That's super cool. So I, I know lip trills are the way to uh, ever a lot of singers that I know warm up. Tell me why. What what is it about that specific warm up or or sort of motion? What is it about that that warms yeah. up your voice? For me, it gets the air moving um, in a very healthy way. It also ensures that I'm not overblowing my air. Mm. And it's easy to, it's a good reminder of how much air I really need. And I can translate that to when I'm actually singing. Yeah. Yeah. And so that was your mid range. Mm -hmm. What's your, what does the high one sound like? Uh. <laughs> <laughs> 
Let me move back to my piano. <laughs> um, so I like to do, this is, this is my favorite, like, I'm warming up my top exercise. <laughs> Oh God, I can't reach. That's beautiful. <laughs> wow. So it's like a staccati exercise, but you also get a legato, a little bit of a legato going in the beginning. That's wonderful. So would it be, um, harmful if you just tried to just go to that first thing instead of warming up your mid-range first um i mean it's like again it's like exercising right you don't yeah. want to push it too hard before your body is warm so it's just yeah. i mean yes you can do it but it's healthier yeah um, until the it's not smart warm. to do that yeah um so what is your daily routine to care for your voice do you have a certain diet? Do you do you warm up and sing every single day? Ideally, yes, um, because it is a muscle, and um, and you really feel it if you don't work on that muscle every single day. Well, let me ask you this: Opera singers are known for projecting their voices mm -hmm. and not needing amplification. Mm -hmm. Can you give us an example of? what a non-projected voice sounds like and then a projected voice sound. Totally. I can even do it just with a speaking voice. Oh, okay. Um, Let's do this here. So it's all about using um, your body and all the resonators in your body efficiently. So an example of um, a projected sound, you can even use it in a restaurant where you're talking <laughs> over lots of people. It would be like, hello, how are you? Yeah. And what it is, does that come up, is it a different um, placement in the air or? I think I'm just, for me, I'm using both my head voice and my chest voice. At the same time, it's also placed a little higher. I think of it as like my cheeks as a shelf and it's placed above my cheeks. Okay. That makes sense. <laughs> yeah. But would it um, hurt your voice if you did that all the time? Um. I I don't think so. I mean, it's it's a much more efficient way of talking. Um, yeah. I, I mean, maybe, direct all the I time. Think, yeah. I just, especially if you use your air efficiently um, as well. I think I just get lazy. And <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so what is, what does it sound like backstage before an opera performance or in the dressing room area? Is everybody singing? And warming yeah. up, and yes. are you guys all doing different songs, or are you record? Are, are you warming up together? Uh, everyone's doing their own thing. Usually, it's different scales, warm ups everywhere, and people. Yes, they will also sing snippets of their arias and such. Uh, but honestly, when you're backstage, you're so in the zone. Once you are in your own little bubble, you kind of tune everything else out. Um, so it's funny when I read that question, I had to really think what what <laughs> happens goes on stage. What really happens goes on stage on, on backstage. <laughs> so if I just, as a TPAC staff person, were to walk around backstage, I would be everybody would be singing all at once and getting ready. And are you fully projecting at that time, or are you just kind of yes? Wow, that's amazing. That's amazing. So what is you know, what is your philosophy or guiding principle of your art form? Yeah, um, so for me, I think art um, is an amazing, really powerful tool. It can really change people and make a huge impact. And for me, I think if I can change people's life with my art form, that's all I need to do. And uh, honestly, I think everything that I've done in life uh I've really followed that principle that's fantastic I love that I love that so what it what is your hope for yourself and for opera as an art form um to continue to do that essentially um keep bringing joy to people keep pushing the envelope um rather than just 
you know, being, it's not an art form that should be put on a pedestal. I think it really is for everyone and it's so powerful and everyone deserves to see it. I hope that's helpful. <laughs> I agree. I think that's fantastic. Yes. So tell us about, um, you're involved in something called Wear Yellow Proudly. Yes. What, what, what is that and um, how can we learn about it? Um, so, unfortunately, during this global pandemic, um, lots of Asian and Asian Americans um, all over the globe has been facing um, lots of xenophobia. Um, so, I really wanted to do something but not beat people in the head with it. So actually in the very beginning, right after I le left Nashville, um, me and another um, young artist from the program, her name is Esme Wong, she's a pianist. Um, we started this thing called 14 Day um, Asian Culture Awareness Challenge. So we would post, we would each post um, us performing a different piece from, um, different Asian country every single day. For, for her, it's a different Asian country every day. I only posted Chinese songs, but from many different genres. Um, and uh, that picked up a little bit of attraction. Um, uh, this group um, called Ours Compass Project, they're an um, art song organization that um, raise awareness and give voice to uh, different minority groups. Um, and they reached out to me and was like, hey, Helen, do you want to make this a bigger project and involve more people? Um, so that is how Wear Yellow Proudly came about. Um, and our goal is to aim to bring awareness to Asian culture by showcasing curated performance of music, poetry, music and poetry, and host different panel discussions, um, as well as celebrating the skills of different Asian artists. How can we, how can we, can we, be, is there stuff we can view or look at? Yeah, yeah so we've been, um, we have, uh, sorry, let me go back to the sentence. <laughs> Um, you can find us on all the social media platforms, um, Facebook and Instagram, just search Wear Yellow Proudly. Um, and we are live on uh, YouTube as well. I think that's fantastic. And uh, we can tune in to Wear Yellow Proudly on Facebook or on YouTube and just do a search for that. And, see and Instagram as well. And Instagram as well. Excellent. So what, what we would love, can you share a song with us today? Yeah. And, um, and what is your song and what made you choose this one? So I'm actually going to sing a Chinese song for you all. Uh, this is called Tao, or I live at the source of the Yangtze River. Um, I think it's very fitting uh, for our current situation because it's a song about me and we're all longing to be outside with our friends and family without with our loved ones right now so i think it's very much so a feeling that we can all relate to <laughs>
That's beautiful. That is so beautiful. <laughs> Can you uh, send, email me the a translation Absolutely. for that? And we yeah. will include that in the post. That is fantastic. Yeah. As we wrap up, Helen, what, um, well, how, how can people keep up with you and your career? Sure. Uh, you can find me on my website at uh, HelenHuangSoprano.com or uh, um, check out all my social media. Uh, they're <laughs> all at, at Singing Chirpy. Excellent. Excellent. <laughs> well, thank you so much. This has been wonderful. I really appreciate you and you doing this for us. Likewise. Stay safe, everyone. We hope you've enjoyed today's podcast. TPAC is a nonprofit organization with the mission to lead with excellence in the performing arts and arts education, to enrich lives, strengthen communities, and support economic vitality. You can find our podcasts on iTunes, Spotify, iHeartRadio, and online. For more information or to support TPAC's mission, visit tpac.org. And you can find and follow Helen on her website at HelenHuangSoprano.com and on all social media at Singing Chirpy.